Hello YouTube, I hope you're doing well. Today we're on code.org, we're in Unit 7, Lesson 3, Part 8. It says this program uses data from the Route 100 Influential African Americans dataset to make a quiz app. It says to read the comments and code, and then it says complete the check correct function following the instructions in the comments of the code. When it works, the user should see a new screen after answering five questions showing how many of the questions they answered correctly. And we can see this little image right here flipping through. And once five turns have gone by, it does give the score. So we'll wait for that. And that's the screen that we need. The first thing that I see as I look over the code is that we are pulling information from a data set. So if I click on data and I click here on this table, this is the information that they are grabbing. We can see we have name, profession, sector, age, and then it has some other information. This is what we're going to be focusing in on, the name, the profession, sector, and age for this app. So we can see it's pulling all of that information here. Then it's creating a variable and setting the values for each of those. For the correct name, we see an empty string along with guess. For score, we start at zero, and our question number, it has it set to one. We then see a call to the new question, and we'll jump down there in just a second. We have five different on event clicks. The first four are for these buttons as they populate. When that happens, it populates the text that's in that button. It then goes to the check correct function and it passes the guess along with the correct answer and then calls the function new question. And all four of those do that. There's a second button on the other screen. We have screen one and we have screen two. This on click resets the score to zero, resets the question number at one. It then runs the new question function and it sets our screen back to screen one. And that happens when this button is clicked. Let's look at the new question function, because I believe that out of this entire thing, understanding the function is the most difficult part of this section of the lesson. The first thing we see is we have an if, and what it's doing, it's looking to see is our question number less than or equal to five. By default, it's set at one. If this is true, it's gonna go ahead and create a variable called index. It's randomly gonna choose a number between zero, which would be index zero, and the length of the names list minus one so that it captures the entire list and nothing more. The index that's selected from this random number is going to go ahead and populate the person at that index number. Their name's going to go in correct name. And then it's going to pull their image, the age, and their sector. Once that information has been pulled, it's then going to create a brand new variable called rand answer choice. And it's going to look for a number between one and four. From that selection, it's gonna set that text to one of these four buttons. And again, we're pulling that person's name from the index that was randomly selected. Then we're gonna move down a little bit further. This note is helpful in understanding what's going on. Let me just zoom out a little bit. It says it populates the remaining three buttons, so the buttons over here, with the next three names in the list. And then it says it's the previous three names if the name is one of the last three in the list. So we have another if. This time it's looking at the index position and it's looking to see if this is true. Is that name that was pulled within the last three index entries? And that's why we see a minus four instead of what we've seen in the past, which was a minus one. So if that's true, it's gonna run through a for loop. Var i is set at zero. We're looking for three additional answers. It's gonna run through this and each time it does, it's gonna add one to the variable until this condition is no longer true. And then right here, we have another if, and it's looking to see if that random answer choice is equal to four, which is this right here. If it is, it's gonna reset that now at zero. This random answer choice, if it was four, that would have been the answer that was put there. So it's looking to reset that. Once it's reset to zero, it's then gonna add one to the variable. We're then gonna reassign the index to be plus one. And from that move in the index, we're going to go ahead and populate one of those remaining three buttons with the name at that new index position. And it's going to continue to do that until all four buttons are filled. If this if criteria is not true, it's then going to move to the else portion of this. 
and I like that they've changed the variable from i to j. They set j to equal 0, and as long as j is less than 3, it's going to run through this for loop. Each time it runs through, it's going to add 1 to j. We see very similar coding lines. If random choice answer is equal to 4, it's going to reset it to 0. If it's not, it's going to bypass this. We're going to reassign random answer choice to be plus 1, where then instead of adding 1 and looking to the next index entry to the right, this time we're going to subtract 1 and we're going to look to the next index entry to the left. And that's how we're going to populate the buttons if the other criteria wasn't correct. It's just going to move one to the left for each of the other buttons. And then it's going to set the other choices with that name. And then we're looking at it else from the previous if. So not this if, but this if, which is checking to see is the question number less than or equal to five. When that's no longer true, it's going to take us to that second screen. It's then going to go ahead and print out the string. You answered the score and then questions out of five correctly. And then that brings us down to this part of the function. Honestly, this isn't so difficult compared to understanding the code that we just looked at. The first thing that we need to do is to look to see is the user choice equal to the correct answer. We need to open back up our toolbox. And what we're going to do is go to the control section of the toolbox. We're going to use an if to do this, and we're looking to see is user choice equal to correct answer. If that's true, what we want to do is update our score variable to be score plus one. Remember, originally when we created the variable, it was set at zero. So that adds one to the value stored in score if answer is correct. We also need to do something else. We need to increase the value stored in question number by one. So we're going to reassign another variable. Let's go ahead and do this. We'll drag that below the comma. We want question number. And that's going to be equal to all of this information that's being pulled is from the created variable at the top and is updated throughout the code. I must have hit a space before adding that one. It's an easy fix, just delete it out. I'm thankful for those little hints on the side that tell us what's going on. Let's go and run the app to see if it works. I'm just going to choose the first answer for each of these. And it says that you answered zero questions out of five correctly. Let's see if our play again button works. It does. And we'll select the first answer again. This time it says I answered one question out of five correctly. If there's one thing I can encourage you to walk away with is going through the code and making sure that you understand what is being written. Being able to fill in the function at the end, in my opinion, is not the most important part of this. Yes, you should know how to do it. But again, what I believe to be the most important is this massive function here that has ifs and for loops nested in it. Once you feel comfortable with what you've seen, make sure you click Finish.